sir, are the input costs also going down? Uh, perhaps if you are importing from you know other developing economies where the currencies are also weaker, or or how is this uh, being managed now? How are you hedging against the currency fluctuations in your industry? Well, as you know, there, there's a confluence of uh, uh, effects or factors. Uh, there's the uh, Russia-Ukraine war, which has totally upset the apple cart in terms of fuel supply, the uh, mm -hmm. shortage of coal uh, supply, the, even the pandemic, which has uh, uh, increased the logistics cost, the already high logistics cost. So essentially, uh, we, we are seeing increases in our cost of operations, which are really hard to cope with. Even some of, uh, for example, um, suppliers of power have uh, have increased their prices as well in response to the you know um, shortage of coal if not the increase in price of bunker fuel so it's really very painful right now uh, mm -hmm. you know we, we're still trying to recover from the impact of the pandemic and yet these factors uh, notwithstanding the devaluation of the peso are just uh, creating havoc Sir, but are you seeing, uh, for example, in the United States, uh, one of our larger export countries, that the demand is getting better, especially for your products, um, and that this might be at least a promising or optimistic thing, that their demand is really improving and their economy is, is stronger? Well, the, the demand has always been there. Uh, as you know, uh, our electronics exports play into the international uh, global market. And so even during the pandemic, the demand is always there. And it was really a matter of being able to uh, come up with the supply, especially in the context of the shortage of semiconductor wafers. But this demand that we supply comes at the cost, literally higher cost, the cost of logistics, the cost of power, uh, and other operating costs, utilities costs. So, yeah, we, we expect, in fact, uh, you know, we expect a 10% uh, increase in mm -hmm. our export performance this year but uh, then again the margins will be smaller because of the higher costs sir are you not able to pass on these costs to the consumers or your clients <laughs> i mean uh, given the high that, demand that's a very good question theoretically we should but then again as competitive as the market is and when i say competitive i'm not just talking about uh, companies in the Philippines, but mm -hmm. also competitive uh, com competition from our other ASEAN neighbors. So mm -hmm. we really have to manage those margins and uh, to the point that we, uh, the companies have to absorb uh, a lot of these costs uh, to the extent that they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, what for you again is a comfortable level here for the peso, for the, ex for the uh, electronics industry here? How do you strike a balance of a weak peso without uh, affecting your capacity to buy? Well, you know, uh, as uh, impossible as it sounds, we were okay with the 51 uh, peso per U.S. dollar. I, I don't even know if I go back to that levels, but at least uh, not this not this uh, surge to 54, 55 mm -hmm. pesos that we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Now, again, just to shift the conversation here, last time that we had you on the show, we were talking about capital flight here from potential mm -hmm. investors uh, over fears, uh, considering that uh, we are putting in place an, a rationalization of incentives. Do we have updates on that? Has the situation changed, especially given the current conditions that we are in at the moment? Well, uh, if you recall, as we discussed, we've seen uh, really about $32 billion of uh, uh, erstwhile investments that should have come to the Philippines. And as I mentioned, there were about $400 million more that could uh, uh, probably be moved to other sides. So we're, we're trying to uh, mitigate that. And uh, what we're trying to do is uh, with the new administration uh, uh, that will take over or that will uh, assume position on July 1, we're trying to line up meetings with the new government, including the president, uh, cabinet members, uh, to explain the situation and the real threats that we face, uh, especially in the light of that challenging uh, environment that we face today. All right. And sir, finally, before we let you go, you're sticking to that 10% uh, growth uh, target, uh, which you mentioned earlier on. Sir, give us more color on this. Where will this come from exactly? And does that mean that the sector, to a certain extent, is insulated, apart from, of course, the costs uh, issue, um, fr from all the other issues uh, that, that we are seeing globally, which has hampered the growth of other industries? Well, you know, uh, 
the profile of the industry is such that 70% comes from uh, semiconductors, meaning the integrated circuits that are uh, packaged and shipped out. Uh, 30% uh, comes from nine other sectors, including uh, computer or consumer products, office equipment, telecommunication products, renewable energy, et cetera. So what the, the driving factors would be mostly from the semiconductors, the components, and also uh, demand for um, medical electronics, telecommunication, industrial products, uh, which are really spurred by, you know, the uh, 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 use of uh, data computing, mm. big data, uh, the um, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and IR 4.0. Uh, but again, there are still challenges that we need to face. As I mentioned earlier, we, we'd, we'd like to encourage the government to uh, review the incentives rationalization and also to promote the ease of doing business and also reconcile policies that have, uh, to a certain extent, don't really uh, uh, provide to be helpful to the industry. Like we mentioned about uh, parts localization and then mm -hmm. here you are. Uh, BIR uh, thinking imposing that on local suppliers, but that not only puts mm. at risk the industries, the local suppliers, but also the employment generated by that industry. Um, you know, redundant provisions such as uh, BOC's e-track, the electronic tracking system. Oh, by the way, even the vaccination. I think uh, while we uh, seem to be approving general second, uh, uh, you know, second boosters, but. We also cannot uh, relax on that. Uh, today, for example, I, mm. I read an article that says one popular vaccine, um, there's data that says after after one month, the efficacy drops from 79% to something like 50% after mm. you know another three months, and it's 20%. So I think those are things that we can't relax on and continue to... Uh, uh, be on top of. Otherwise, uh, you know, we will impede the growth of the industry, if not the whole economy.